Hello, welcome to today's webinar. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, in a such great number all around the world again. Exhibition review from the Marmomarkt 2020 and the Chasai 2020 in Bologna. We participated in both exhibitions and now we want to show you a few products which we uh, presented there, which some of them launched there. Um, so a few products you might know if you followed us the last month, but uh, there are definitely a few new ones here, um, which we want to show you. Yes, as always in our webinar, we will uh, do partly here on the screen um, with the PowerPoint, and then we move over to our application table and do some practical demonstrations. Yeah, let's start. Um, the first product or the first type of products I want to show you, um, we have to make a little bit of an excurs uh, ex to the different types of adhesives or adhesives types, and especially um, when we talk about stability for UV radiation. So uh, uh, if the glue turns yellow or not. Um, and yeah, when you know us um, or when you know the, 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 the bonding products, the adhesive construction adhesives on the market, they are formulated out of different chemical bases like polyester base, uh, epoxy base, epoxy acrylate, polyurethane, and so on and so on. All of them, they have great uh, properties but also some of them have some disadvantages. And when you see here, for example, when it comes to UV stability, and we don't talk about bonding strength, we don't talk about uh, the, the, the change of color of the glue, yeah? because the UV light usually does not affect our glues. It doesn't matter what product you use, but uh, it can change the color. So when you look, for example, for standard epoxy resins, they turn yellow um, after a while. So it depends now how good is the epoxy? Does it uh, get turn uh, faster or does it uh, turn slower yellowish? So what we do is we have uh, so-called QUV testing um, systems where we simulate weather, like hot weather, cold weather, rain, and sunlight. And um, now when we test this, uh, for example, for 500 hours, this simulates a time period of two to three years in a, a, a yeah, let's say Northern or Middle Europe country. So you can see here, epoxy resin, as clear and transparent it is in the beginning, it can turn yellow uh, quite a bit after some time. Uh, the same happens with polyester, standard polyester products, of course. Um, you see they are, yeah, they're starting already a little bit yellowish because the standard polyester resins are not so clear and transparent, but um, also they turn quite yellow after a while. And in compare to that, we have some uh, high quality poly polyurethane resins, and um, we don't talk about all of the polyurethanes because this is also a wide field. They are very cheap polyurethanes. When you think about this, uh, construction foam out of a spray tube from the Home Depot. Yeah, of course, it's it's not a high quality polyurethane product. It comes out of the of the spraying device already yellow. So we don't uh, mean that. We mean really high quality bonding products like our Everclear series. And here we have tested it for 1,500 hours, which, which means, for example, 10 years of uh, uh, Europe weather. Um, and you don't see any changes. So we have launched a few products of the Everclear series. So we started with the Everclear 510, um, I think two years back or three years back. And this is a quite transparent, milky transparent product. It's a one-to-one -one bonding system. And we have it in a cartridge and we have it in a tube tin um, combination. And this is used when you want to glue white stones, especially outside, and want to fill white stones and white marble, like, for example, this white sewage crosses here when you have to repair here some some um, some breakouts, for example, like you can see on the slide, see here on the slide, there is Everclear 510 ideal because everything you bond and glue with it, it stays the same color. So if it's like uh, 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 very white stones or beige stones, you, you choose the right color, you adapt the color and then it stays like it is. 
So the next development was our Everclear 300. Um, this was a pre-colored um, Everclear polyurethane product. Um, we have it available in 13 colors. So here for the applicator who needs already a pre-colored product, which is uh, ready to use out of the cartridge, um, we have matched about yeah, the most common colors. You can check in our color charts. Um, they are insert there. So where is that? Uh, where's a, where do we need that? For example, when you do bonding outside ceramics, for example, this uh, uh, XXL ceramics, which uh, are used more and more, and they imitate usually white marble. And when you do some mitre bonding there for outdoor kitchens, et cetera, um, you don't want to have any change in color on the bonding seam. So here the Everclear 300 is perfect. A very famous project was the uh, restoration of the Sheikh Zayed Mosque in Abu Dhabi, when you remember, I think we presented it once, um, where all of these small joints, million of joints were filled with the product, grinded after, um, and that was the Finnish uh, square, uh, courtyard. It's about, I think, 15,000 square meter courtyard was done there and all done with the Everclear 300. Um, the joints were filled, the joints stay the same color. So both of these products are uh, mostly chill or L special like knife grade uh, uh, consistency products. So what if I have very fine cracks, very micro holes, pin holes, small openings, which I want to fill, um, you need a liquid product. And now we come to our new presentation, Everclear 505. So this is a, a four to three Everclear product, very clear, very transparent, and it stays like it is. So this is very interesting um, for all the, the slab manufacturer. Also, when you think about all the grease uh, uh, stones, the white sewage, the, the statuario, the, the tassos, all the materials, they need some filling, they need some uh, 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 crack filling. And here you can use the Everclear 505 perfectly. So this is a little bit more details to the product. So it's of course weather resistant, it's not yellowing. So this is very important. and it's no bleeding, has, uh, it does not bleed. So this happens sometimes when you have a fine crack, fine uh, uh, crack in a marble, and you fill it with a epoxy resin. You can see on the left and the right side of the, of the crack that there is like some dark shade, some, some shadow lines. This is because of the epoxy moving inside uh, the, the, the marble and making this kind of discoloration. So this will not happen with the Everclear 505. Yeah, where the, is it used? As I said, already with small cracks and, and holes, but also for the complete slab uh, a treatment. Um, for example, here, this was a company or a testing field from uh, in, in Brazil, where they have all these nice white quartzites, like white maca ubers and so on. And when you treat this surface with a, with a epoxy resin, after a while, the stone turns yellowish. Yeah, you can see here the original color of the stone treated with the resin and it turns yellowish. And then compare here, the Everclear 505, you can see the stones are crystal white, um, no change in color here. So this is very interesting. And um, so some of you think, nah, where is this so important? Yeah, because mostly it's small cracks and holes which are filled but also the, in the capillary system of the stone, um, these resins can penetrate and um, let's say make a, a nicer surface, a higher gloss surface of the stone. And so you have resin in the complete surface, could have resin in the complete surface. And when you have an, a, yellow, a, a, a resin which turns yellowish, then this can happen. You can see here, this is a kitchen countertop made out of quartzite. Um, and the same stone goes outside as a, as a window uh, uh, sheet, shield, or how yeah, is this? Window seal. So um, here they put some lines in it um, for, the, for the windows to move, to close. So first, when we uh, came to see this, uh, uh, yeah, this matter, uh, you can see here directly indoor and outdoor, yeah, complete the same stone, but the color changed dramatically. Everybody saw the first thing, okay, maybe there's some organic stainings, we have to clean it. 
um, or it's some rust or so, but it's nothing of that. It's actually the resin, in this case, the epoxy resin, resin which sits into the capillaries and in the pores of the stone and through the sunlight turns yellowish. So this would not have happened when you have used Everclear 505. So just have it in mind if you have white stones to fill, to, to, to apply the resin on it, to make some small uh, uh, cracks, uh, close some small cracks, then the Everclear 505 would be the product of choice. Are there any questions to that, Otello? Sorry. Um, yeah, I forget to mention, always I, you can ask questions all the time, put it in the chat, Otello is bringing them to me or answer them directly. Yes, hello Johannes and hello Hi. everyone <laughs> again. Uh, well, there are two questions. One question is uh, what will be the working time of Everclear 505 at temperatures around 40 degrees? Mm -hmm. And uh, the other question is, can I color this product or does it remain transparent? Okay, um, let's go back. So working time, usually we, we say yeah, 12 to 15 minutes on 20 degrees. Um, with epoxy resins, you know, when it goes to 40 degree, usually you say like you, you, you cut the time, the working time in half, or even you, you, you have only a quarter of the working time. Um, with the polyurethane system, it does not work exactly the same. You lose some time, yes, with 40 degrees, but not, not that much. So probably I would probably think you are between, yeah, six to seven minutes uh, working time on 40 degrees. Uh, so. But this is usually enough when you do a slab. I have visited a lot of slab lines. Usually they treat a slab, I don't know, in two to three minutes yeah, uh, uh, with a resin to cover it all. So yeah, this, this is uh, totally workable. And then curing time is about six hours at 20 degrees. So it will be a little bit faster when it be 40 degree. Okay, that was that. And then uh, regarding coloring, uh, yes, you can color the Everclear. Um, as all of our Everclear, for example, also the Everclear 510, you can color with our um, spectrum pastes. So you know our spectrum paste, we have over 50 different colors there. Um, don't use more than 2% of the uh, spectrum paste, but this is totally fine. Usually you need not more than 1% to get a really strong color. Um, so this is possible. You can, you can color all the Everclears. Any more questions? No more questions, Jonas. No? Okay, great. Then we move on. So this was Everclear 505. And now we come to a, a, our second main topic, which we presented in the, in the Verona exhibition and in Chassai in Bologna. Um, yeah, our German customers know that already because we've also presented it in the Stone Tech in the Nuremberg exhibition, here, exhibition in Germany in June. Um, lightweight construction bonding. So uh, rigid and elastic bonding, because we have the feeling that uh, the lightweight, uh, the composite bonding of, of thin ceramics, thin natural stone to some substrates just uh, is increasing um, everywhere. And we have some products which can be used for the different uh, uh, yeah, substructure materials. For example, um, what we feel is a lot of uh, people doing is using this weighty or checo board foam boards, uh, which are covered with some yeah, cementitious uh, uh, fiber coating. And this is a quite rigid uh, substructure and you can cut it and bond it quite good together. And then they cover it with some uh, thin ceramic or porcelain panels or with some thin natural stone. And for that, you need a very strong, uh, a good workable uh, uh, adhesive. And this is our Acapox panel adhesive 7030. So this is a full epoxy system. We have a three to one mixing ratio here. And it has a, a very nice working time from 20 to 30 minutes. So it's not too short, not too long. When you think about big uh, uh, countertops, for example, to apply and to, to move the pieces. And the advantage is you have a very strong bonding and you have a good working time. And already after two to three minutes, uh, hours, minutes would be quite fast, but two to three hours, the, the bonding is uh, yeah, fully done. And you have a, a ready, uh, uh, let's say furniture, if it is a vanity top or a countertop and you can move it. Yeah, you don't have to wait longer. So here a short 
uh, video. We have done, we have presented this product earlier this year already. So if you have followed us, um, I think you, you might know it, but uh, this was also a, a very important topic in the Verona exhibition. So we wanted to show it here again. Um, you can see the two components have two different colors. The A component is light gray and the B component is like a dark gray. So this makes it easy when you mix it. Um, when you still see two colors, you are not done mixing. So please go on mixing and stirring so you get one homogeneous paste. And then you can see with the two spatula, if it's like a two millimeter, four millimeter, two spatula, it's easy to, to, to apply to spread and it has directly a tag. So also the ceramic slab, for example, here in this case does not move. Okay, I think enough talking, I will show it to you. <clears throat> so this is the product. Yeah, um, this is the A component. This is the B component. And what you saw in the animation, um, a small vanity top we built here so this is, it looks massive. Yeah, you can see this looks like one big piece of white uh, ceramic or stone. It doesn't matter, it could be anything. Um, you have here your, your train board where the water can flow down, um, but actually it's lightweight. Yeah, it's a, a foam board substructure, which is glued together with our Archipur 250. And uh, the surface is covered then with ceramics. And you can see here, this is the rigid Archipox 7030 already cured. You have a very high bonding power, no water there, and you get a massive um, product. Ah, thank you, Otello. So this would be the Archipur 250 to bond the substructure. Maybe I go on the, uh, the top camera. Yeah, all this substructure here is bonded together um, with the Archipur 250, and then it's just covered here. Um, with the ceramic and here with the uh, Agipox 7030. So yeah, it's a nice product for all the, the tilers and, and installers who do the vanity tops or the bathrooms or also countertops. Um, you get a massive look. Um, we talk about the, the joints and the bonding of the joints later because we have also, have also some, some new products here. Uh, yeah, so any questions there already? Yes, two questions, Johannes. Okay. One question is, what's the application thickness of the Archipox? Mm -hmm. And the second question is, can I use this also on natural stone? Yes, of course, of course. That's the, that's the reason we, we have a fully epoxy product and not, for example, a cementitious based product. Um, because when it comes to lightweight or thin uh, natural stone, sometimes the cementitious based products they leave marks, especially when you use white marble, for example, they, they shine through and leave marks into the stone. And this will not happen with this Archipox 7030. So fully usable for natural stone, of course. And then what was the first question? The first question was, what's the application thickness of the product? Ah, um, doesn't matter. Uh, it depends how good is your cut of the stone and uh, or the ceramic and how good is your have you bonded together your substructure. If you are very flat, you can use only one millimeter uh, thickness. Yeah, but um, as it is uh, a tixotropic product, it does not flow. Yeah, so you can also use uh, uh, two spatulas, for example, here with a, uh, uh, what was it, two millimeter or four millimeter uh, two uh, uh, size. Uh, doesn't matter, yeah, you can go from, from one millimeter to four millimeter thickness. This is all what you need, uh, uh, it's possible to do with this product. Well, one question came in, what about glass fiber reinforcement? Do I have to remove it before it, before I apply it or can I apply it directly? Yeah, glass fiber. Uh, you mean, you mean, for example, um, let me think about, because usually glass fiber is not used here, but the only way where glass fiber is used is when it's on the very thin ceramics or natural stones. Sometimes uh, uh, the, the manufacturer put glass fiber and uh, with an epoxy resin on the back of the ceramic or of the natural stone to reinforce it because it actually is six millimeter or four millimeter thin. Um, then there is glass fiber. I hope this is the questions I, I uh, was intended to. So 
Ah, yeah. Yeah, probably something like this. Yeah, there's some um, glass faser reinforcement on the backside of this of this marble here. This could be uh, the question. Um, no, you don't have to remove it. So this is the good thing. You have epoxy here and you have epoxy on the backside of the ceramic or of the natural stone. You don't have to remove it first. Um, this is the same system. It goes hand in hand. You can bond it there. Um, this is actually also something what you cannot do with a cementitious based product because this will not stick to that. I think I hope this was the question. And then yes, I think that was the answer. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. So then, if there are not more questions, we move over to the next product. No more we questions, Johannes. Okay, good. Okay. Ah, no, we don't move to the next product. I just show you a few, uh, 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 yeah, real products or, or real furnitures or vanity tops which are, are done with the Archipur 250 as a construction here, which I showed you. And then the Archipox 7030 was used to glue ceramic on top. You can see here, this is a double uh, wash basin. And then when it's finished, it looks like this. So here, Archipox 7030 were used to, was used to, to bond this thin ceramic completely over the the construction. And this is nice because this looks massive now. Yeah, this whole piece, if it would be out of one block or natural stone, it would be incredibly heavy. So two people can easily move it to the to the first, second, third floor because it's all lightweight underneath, but looks massive and it's covered with ceramic. And it is also a strong, rigid uh, piece of work. Yeah, it's not like moving or something. So this is the advantage. And also here, here there were uh, countertops done uh, with a light, lightweight, uh, uh, cementitious uh, foam board underneath, and then the Archipox 7030 was applied. The ceramic was laid on top of it, and then it was installed. And you can see here this nice countertop, um, which was done very nicely. And this looks very massive. Looks like one big piece. And imagine this would be natural stone. Um, it would be incredibly heavy. But now with the six millimeter ceramic and a foam board or a lightweight construction underneath, this is a ideal uh, a job for two people to move it there and install it. So just to give you an idea um, where the products uh, are used. And this was now rigid. Yeah, so non-flexible substructure, concrete substructure or concrete foam boards. Now we come to some substructure which, which is maybe flexible or moving. Yeah, there you need a flexible glue. Um, and this, there we have our Archipur 150 sandwich adhesive. This is a polyurethane based product. Um, also a two to one system. Uh, no, it's a four to one system. Excuse me. You have a working time of about 15 to 20 minutes. So this is a quite nice working time also. So you can spread it also with a two spatula or with a roller on a good surface, a big surface, and then for example, when you have aluminum honeycomb or MDF substructure or wooden substructure, which is maybe a little bit moving, you need a flexible product, which also takes the movement. Um, or when you when you install it, uh, for example, in a in a in a yard or in an elevator where there is movement and vibration, so you need a product which takes this uh, a movement. Um, and then the Archipur 150 is ideal for that. Yeah, as I said aluminum honeycomb or wooden panel. Um, and then in combination with ceramic or stone, the Archipur 150 is ideal. Here you see we put it with a with a, a roller, but you can also use it with a two spatula um, when you have, let's say, maybe a little bit some uneven ground to 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 buffer this uh, uh, the, 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 the unevenness and and to bond uh, the, the material on top of it. Yeah, for example, as I said, yeah, elevators or uh, kitchen blocks, for example. Yeah, especially when you have the front side of the kitchen for the cupboards. Um, yeah, here's some pictures as well. You can see you can roll it quite fine, but uh, um, as I said, you can also apply it in a in a thicker layer. And then, what is the application here? You can see thin ceramic glue to substructure, aluminium. MDF panels, other substructure materials, lightweight materials. Here, the Acupur 150 is ideal for the application. 
Yeah, are there questions to that, Otello? Yes, one question yeah. uh, about the Archipool 150. Um, I use it for metal bonding. Do I need a primer for this? No. Usually you can use it directly on, on, on the metal. Um, it must be, you must be sure that it, for example, aluminum sometimes has the problem um, that it has some, how do you say, Otello, some layer on top, some, some patina on top. So this remove it uh, first, but usually it has a very great bonding to metals. Um, if you have a specific question, please write us if you have a certain metal, but usually we tested it on all the standard aluminum, uh, uh, stainless steel, um, and, and, and materials like that. And it has had air, always a, a great bonding power there. More questions. No more question. Okay, good. So we move over to the next topic or we start with a little bit of a, uh, let's say theory. Um, we stay with tiles, with porcelain tiles. And just to show you the difference um, bonding techniques, which are done um, with, with, with ceramics. Usually a ceramic or a porcelain tile um, yeah, uh, uh, is, is formed out of two materials. You have a decor layer, yeah, which is usually the color or the, the imprint and the design. And then you have the, the, uh, the mitre layer um, which is sometimes a different color. Some manufacturer also produce it in the same color. Yeah, but uh, most of it, you have a, a, a top layer, the decor layer and the mitre layer. And um, then you have the, there are two different colors. So why is that important? This is important when it comes to, to the mitre bonding, the 45 degree mitre bonding. And then there are two different techniques. The mitre bonding, uh, uh, which is done by the stone fabricators. Uh, usually they bond the ceramics like they used to bond the natural stone. Yeah, you have a two centimeter, three centimeter natural stone slab. You want to have a, a, a big front on top of it. You cut the, the, the 45 degree and you put it together with some glue, usually color bond and glue it together, let it cure. And um, then you cut uh, uh, the small edge here you you hone the small edge here and then you're done yeah so you you produce the the mitre or the the the, the table or the countertop before and install it after on a substructure or not if it's needed so this is the same they do with the with the ceramic so but then when you when you hone it on the on the edge you remove of course this decor layer so then it's important that you check what is the color of my of, uh, uh, my color underneath. So please match here the color bond, which is usually used for these indoor mitre bondings um, to the to the sub layer of the of the, the ceramic. Yeah, because you removed the decor layer and now you have here the mitre bonding. So this is the original technique, which is done. Now the tie layers, they use a different technique, especially when it comes to the smaller and thinner tiles like the 12 millimeter tiles, they formed first the substructure, as we said, like with the way the weighty boards, and um, they glued all together, the substructure of a vanity top or of a shower trail or something like that. And then they glued, for example, with the Archipox 7030, um, the ceramic on top of the substructure. They did not close the mitre yet. Yeah, They cut the mitre, but they did not close it. So they moved the pieces as close as possible together, and then I leave it for curing. And now they fill from the top. Yeah, It's not a bonding, it's now more a filling. Um, for example, with our color bond, the top edge um, of this, of this uh, yeah, mitre, and now it's important that the color is matching to the decor. So here you have to check um, the, the, the color of the decor and then match the color bond to, together. And now here it's important that we have a water-free substrate uh, 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 glue like our Archipox 7030. And because you can imagine when you have a water-based product, you use it here for bonding. Um, the water always tries to, to yeah, evaporate and then it tries to move out of the only open area which is left and this is this mitre here. And if you now want to fill it from the top, 
with, for example, a color bond yeah, or, or, or a platinum, for example, um, you will have a loss in bonding power because there is water there. So that's the reason we recommend for this substructure either our Archipur 150 or our Archipox 7030. So, and now, yeah, I talked about color bond. You know the product already. Um, this is not new. Yeah, this is for the indoor mitre bonding of, of countertops, uh, vanity tops, etc. It doesn't matter if you use the stone fabricators technique or the tile layers technique, the color bond is the right product. And with our P plus version, which we have now a few years, you have also huge bonding powers on ceramics. So 50 plus percent bonding powers on ceramics. Um, and it's also available, as I said, in 50 colors, but this is not new. What is new is to apply uh, how to make the, the application of the mitre quite easy and quite, uh, uh, let's say, to, to let it do anyone and everywhere and to create fastly without any after work, a nice massive look. And for that, we have um, our trollinator system. Uh, you have a small mixing nozzle tip, which you place on our standard mixing nozzle and it has a 90 degree cut. And this you can place on top of the open mitre here, move it along and press the glue inside so you don't wobble around with the, with the mixing nozzle and with the gun. And you press directly the glue inside the, the mitre. You don't waste much material. Then we have our Jolinator um, smoothening tool. Um, this has a special shape and this is a patented shape. I will show it a few la slides later. Why it is so special. And this, um, you remove the excess and also plus pressing more glue inside the joint and uh, uh, creating or guaranteeing that it's bubble free. So you don't have to do any after work um, uh, when you're done. Yeah, we have two cholinators, one in 90 degree, which I think is 90% of use uh, when you have here the 90 uh, degree edge to create this nice massive look uh, uh, tiles. And when you have like, for example, here this bath tub and you want to do a 135 degree mitre, then you need our cholinator for 135 degrees. Yeah, again, the patented cholinator shape and design you can see this here. Um, this guarantees that the glue is bubble free inside that you get to have a proper filling because the glue gets rolled inside this tool around and always pressed inside the glue and the joint. So, but I, I think enough talking, um, all the benefits, I think I explained already material saving, you don't go left and right, air bubble free application, you get a product deep inside the joint, yeah, you get a proper filling. When you use it with a spatula, you would never get the, the, the glue or the color bond or platinum so deep into the joint as with the cholinator. And what is the most important thing? One-time application. You don't have to do it a second time or a third time because you missed some spots or some uh, air bubbles uh, uh, came up. So these are all the comparison. And this is now examples, examples, <laughs> so perfect. A, a massive look, you see this is the ceramic, the Carrara, and it looks like one big piece, but when we make a picture from the side, you can see it's just six millimeter ceramic uh, glued on a weedy board. And this joint is done perfectly with the Cholinator, perfect 90 degree edges. Um, now we come to the demonstration finally. <laughs> so, yeah, we will do that now and that, that will show you that it's uh, actually quite easy um, to apply it. Just uh, uh, before we do that, uh, a short history about uh, the edges um, in, in ceramic industry. Um, usually in the old times, yeah, you put or still it's available, these trolley edges, um, so metal, plastic, copper, doesn't matter. Yeah, you have your usually your ceramic tile, yeah, uh, uh, normal tile. You just install it to cover the edge. You use this jolly joints. Um, then, yeah, this is still used, but then the, the time went on and the people wanted a more, let's say, massive look. So they cut already the, the ceramic in 45 degree, but then for the filling on top, they used some 
yeah, here you can see some just grout, cementitious grout, the same grout you use here, they used here um, there. And yeah, it was better, it looked nicer, but you can see here, let me see, yeah, you can see, you see here already, the two different colors, yeah, from the decor and from the uh, uh, submaterial. And this was not so nice and there is a way to do it better. And this is this, yeah, this is then with the color bond and with the cholinator done. It is a very fine line uh, uh, joint and edge and it really creates this massive look. And this is what we will do now. So what we have here is we have a substructure with VD board, for example, Chaco board, what you, you call them, you name them, glued together with uh, Archipur 250, then with the Archipox 7030, the ceramics was glued on it. We have left a few millimeter joint open, maybe one to two millimeter maximum. Yeah, we put some duct tape there and now we will use our cholinator. So yeah, first, this is this tip. This is a small tip we place on our mixing nozzle. Yeah, you press it on it and then you can move it a little bit, depend on what um, what angle you want to use the gun. If you use the gun like this or that, um, you, you have all the possibilities to move it. And then we have here this small Jolly Nata device yeah, with this famous form, bend, bended form, which creates this nice uh, filling and forming of the, or shaping of the edge. So color bond, I think everybody knows our color bond, but I always, I'm not tired to, to explain it. Um, when you first use a cartridge or when it was uh, uh, in your shelf for a while, um, first, before you put the mixing nozzle on it, it's a two component system. So make sure both components come out of the chambers. It's the case here, hardener and resin. Now we place the mixing nozzle on top of it lock it and now I can check yeah, if it's okay for me. Yes, I can move it a little bit. So, okay, also here, before I use it the first time, make sure you, um, what do you say, dispatch? Yeah. Dispose a few centimeter of the color bond that you're sure it's mixed proper. I'll do that now. So, and now I place the gun on top of the edge, press, and you can see how nice, uh, can you see it? I, I think, yeah, I move it on top, just move along. And I don't wobble around. I don't, when I would not use this one, I go down, I, I make a line, I waste a lot of glue. Now here in this case, I really are precisely on top of the edge. And now I use the cholinator. Yeah, I place it there just with the top end of the, of the cholinator tool and then move it. And you can see I remove all the glue and all the glue is pressed inside the joint very smooth yeah, and I nearly have any leftovers, just a little bit of glue Yeah, I wasted. Notice I can remove with the third tool, which is included is a spatula, which directly fits in here. And then it's already done. So this is all the secret, right? We are here. This is all the secret. Um, you can clean it perfectly with some solvent or, or alcoholic cleaner and can reuse everything. So now usually you know the glue, Calibond has six minutes working time, 20 to 30 minutes um, curing time. So I will wait now 20 minutes, then remove the tapes and, and then the whole joint and edge is done. Um, we have done here one in the morning webinar um, you can see it, it's the same material. This morning was the German webinar and you can see already the edge 
it looks perfect. Yeah, it's no miracle. Everybody can do that. Yeah, just make a proper cut um, on the ceramic 45 degree, move the pieces as close as possible together and then tape it. Use a, use a let's say, a, a plastic tape, not a completely plastic tape It's needed, but a tape which is at least some polymer on top. You can also use this, this paper tapes, but then um, the glue wets it a little bit and it's not so easy to, to remove it then. So use a little bit of uh, plastic tape, then it's much more easier to, to remove everything. Are there any questions to Jolly Nader and Colorbond? Yes, one viewer is asking uh, which cleaner is suitable to clean the Jolly Nader? Ah, as I say, ah, okay, I did not, sorry. Uh, here, there is Cleaner Eye we recommend. From our side, it's an alcoholic cleaner. Um, it's also good for cleaning other, other mitre or other surfaces which you want to bond. Um, you can clean it here, the tools with it, and uh, remove everything. So cleaner eye is, is it would be our recommendation for that. More questions? No more questions. No more questions. OK, then we come to our next topic. I think this we leave. And then maybe in then 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Yes, we, we leave it to the next topic and then we will do that too. Yes, okay, good idea. It here, and then we will remove it. Good. So let's move to our next topic. So this was Cholinator. This was, yeah. A lot of ceramic today, yeah. We said this Cholinata ideal for ceramics. Um, the, the foam board systems usually done with the six millimeter ceramics. There is a trend here in ceramics and porcelain. And why is that? Um, the trend is because all the ceramic and porcelain manufacturer, what do they do? They copy mostly marble, yeah nice white marbles, nice black marbles, nice limestones. Of course, there are some different other surfaces they imitate, but let's say mostly it is marble which they imitate. And why do they do that? Because marble is exclusive, it's luxury, it has nice designs, and a lot of people want to use it as a kitchen countertop, as a table, as a vanity top, but marbles are acid uh, uh, sensitive, so they can be attacked by acid. And that's the reason the ceramics are so much on a, on a let's say, on a run right now. And um, because everybody wants a nice marble countertop, yeah, but don't want to have the disadvantage of a marble getting acid attacks, edge marks. Um, and uh, that's the reason the porcelain and the ceramic business went up the last years um, because they are completely acid resistant. So, yeah, as I said earlier, we have some, also some some really new developments which we wanted to show you. Um, maybe we can, let's say, move the trend a little bit in another direction and bring back a little bit the marble um, because you can see here what happens when I used a polished marble. In this case, it's Chura limestone um, as a countertop. Yeah, you have here all the edge marks, all the edge marks here at the at a, a wash basin, yeah, and uh, the people call us. Oh, I'm, I, I use pH skin neutral cleaning products, and I don't understand why I get the edge marks. Um, because pH skin neutral means skin neutral, but our skin is actually acidic. Yeah, it's slightly acidic. It has a pH value, pH value of 5.5 roughly, and a neutral pH value would be seven. So we are acidic. And this stains, stains, yeah, actually they are not stains, the customer callers, um, how can we remove the stains? I have a wine stain, uh, a vinegar stain on my marble. This is not a stain, yeah. A stain is something, some dirt which is inside, which we can clean. This is really an attacked surface, so an etched surface, an etch marks. So the gloss, the top layer of the stone is uh, destroyed and removed. And this is nothing you can clean. Yeah. Um, another example is here, this black marble, uh, Sahara Noir, very nice material, but also here, soaps, shampoos, which you use, skin neutral, they are all acidic. Then you use some disinfectant cleaner to remove some lime scale 
which happens from the water uh, uh, marks. And, but then all this disinfectant cleaner, they are acidic. So they destroy the surface, they leave marks, they remove the, the gloss, the color of the stone, and there's nothing you can do here, nothing you can clean. This is an destroyed surface. Yeah, here you can see a nice example, probably this part they replaced after some, some time and you see this is still nice and dark in color, but I bet a few showers later and a few cleanings later, it is as light and bright and white as here. Uh, so this will happen uh, uh, sooner or later. Another example here, this nice Belgian blue, um, uh, uh, what is it, vanity top. Yeah, very nice material, but when you use the shampoo, soaps, etc., you get all the edge marks here. You lose the color, you use the, the finish, the gloss, the nice satin finish here. You can see it was a satin finish and now it's all uh, matte and uh, no glossy white, all the color is gone. The structure is gone because of the acidic soaps, shampoos, cleaners. Yeah, but not only cleaners or vinegar or coffee must be uh, uh, the problem. Even water, sparkling water, yeah, is acidic enough to leave some water watermarks. Yeah, on a on a polished white marble, you can see here you left the glass with water, uh, something run down sparkling water inside, the gas uh, uh, is slightly acidic, um, and then you can have here your acid attack, your edge marks, no stain is this, yeah, it's actually an edge mark. And the people call us and say, why is this happening? We have impregnated, we have used your sealers, on penetrating sealers on top of it. Um, yes, because a sealer is a penetrating sealer, it, penetrates into the stone surface and protect, protects from liquids going inside the stone. Yeah, but it does not um, um, avoid that a liquid is touching the stone. Yeah, you can, you can put on an impregnated surface, you can put your oil and your water there and it will not move inside the stone, but it still has contact to the stone surface. On a granite, this is no issue at all. Yeah, a granite is acid resistant. So you, you use an impregnation there. You have your oil, you have your water, you have your lime juice, you have your Coca-Cola. It sits on the surface because of the impregnation. It does not move in, no harm done. But when you have a marble and a limestone, I can say, I think I shall show it in the next slide. You can see here the red dots. This is the impregnation. Yeah, so it pen penetrated into the capillary system. It prevents of water going inside or, or liquids going inside, but they are still touching the stone. So, and then the acid can work. The acid can attack the surface, remove the gloss, dissolve the, the, the lime of the stone, of the limestone and the marble. Impregnators, penetrating sealers are no acid protection. Yeah, Not ours and not from other companies. The only thing what you can use is you need a protective coating to separate the acidic liquid from the stone so that they don't even touch. And that's the only way you can guarantee an acid protection. And uh, this we have done with our product, Acid Protect. Um, yeah, this is how it looks. And let's say, let's, let's look what it can do. I move over here. So we have two versions. I explain the two versions um, a little bit later. So we have here two marbles, Nero Maquina. Yeah, let me check if I, yeah, nice, glossy, um, shiny, polished marble, the same here. Yeah, you don't see any difference. Both are very nice, high gloss surfaces. Now I have some lemon and some lime here. Let's see what happens when I place them on the surface. Maybe we go in the overhead camera. I press here the lime there, press it, uh, the lemon, press it here. The same I do with the lime. Here and here. And now let's wait a few minutes. Uh, what will happen? Because uh, people say stone is strong. They cannot imagine that that fast 
an asset attack can actually happen. And if you have customers using all these nice uh, marbles, the black, Nero Marquina, Sahara Noir, you name them, um, they, they can tell you yeah, about their problems and, and uh, uh, how they have to clean something drips, uh, spills, they have to clean it directly. And this is headache, yeah? So we, we created a system to avoid that. And we have created two different systems or the same system, but two different application methods. So we have a brush version here and a spray version here. So you here you need a spray gun, like from the automotive, uh, a clear coat spraying, for example. And here you need a brush or a two spadula, for example, to spread the product on the stones. And um, why two versions? Um, let's start with the spray version. This would be, let's say, the mass production when you have big surfaces, tables, countertops. Um, you do them in your factory, in a, a spray cabin, for example. Um, there you can use this product. And um, if you have, let's say, smaller areas or already installed areas like these countertops, which I showed you, there you cannot go and spray. Yeah, in an already uh, uh, installed countertop in a living room. Here you need a brush version. So this is ideal for that. Um, yeah, I think let's check and move over to our lemon and lime. Yeah, here was a drop. It already let a mark. I'm not sure if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. I removed the lemon here. So obviously, this was the stone which was not protected. Uh -huh. yeah, you can see the white mark is appearing. The same, we remove here the lime. I remove it. Let's wait till it is dried up and you can see this white marks. The gloss is gone. From how long? Two minutes lime on, on the surface, maybe, Otello? Approximately, yes. Two minutes. So there's no time. This can happen every time and everywhere. You spill a little bit lime juice um, next to your cocktail or your, your tea or anything, and, and that's gone. You did not look for two minutes, and this is the surface. Now, when I go more to the camera, you can see also the structure here. Yeah, the nice structure or nice, yeah, doesn't, depends. Uh, I think it looks nice because it looks like a, a, a imprint of the of the lemon or the lime. But if you have a countertop like this, you're not very happy. Yeah, and this is not a stain. Uh, again, not a stain. You cannot clean that. Um, and let's check on the other side. Obviously, there will nothing happen because this stone is protected by our acid protect. Yeah, can see. You can see here, yeah, nothing. Yeah, all clear, no acid marks. Okay, now you might say, okay, a lime, a lemon a, is not as strong as acid. True, it's not the strongest, but we are a chemical producer. So we have some strong stuff here. Um, I will prepare myself for that. So we have here some really strong acidic liquids and we choose one of them. And yeah, this is a pH one acid. And now I will move a little bit over and put a few drops here. Yeah, you see nothing. I do it here and you see directly the acid attack, the foam, yeah how the acid eats the surface of the stone, destroys the lime. Um, the same here, nothing. And here directly the acid attack. Yeah. I will try to show you the, the liquid here. Um, yeah, here you can see the, the acid running down, nothing is happening. It drips down here and leaves all the marks and destroys it, yeah. So here is the acid protection. Here is no protection. Are there any questions so far? Because if not, I will move on um, because 
this is not all. People say, okay, this was nice polished surfaces, but we, yeah, most of us don't like nice polished surfaces, especially when you go to middle or Northern Europe, they like the matte finish. Um, and this is not a problem. You can treat this, uh, this, this protection coating, the acid protect with some um, special papers, and then you create a matte finish. Uh, here you have the same stone, the Nero Marquina, but in a matte finish. Again, I can put here the acid on top of it. Yeah, put here the acid there. Nothing is happening. Here yeah, again, the acid attack. Or when we come, which I showed you already on the slides, the nice Belgium limestone. a nice Belgium limestone, nice matte finish, how it's usually done in this area, Belgium, Netherlands, uh, or Western France, they like this Belgium milestone, uh, 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 Belgium limestone, Belgium blue, in this matte finish, you apply here our acid, nothing is happening, you apply it here, and you get directly the acid attack. Yeah? So this is what we can do. Are there any questions? Yes, Johannes, there are two questions. One mm -hmm. question is, um, what color does this product have? Do I need another product for a white marble? Mm -hmm. And uh, the second question is, yeah. how much do I need for one square meter? Okay, no, it is a transparent product. We can use it also on a, on a white stone. We have here a white, Carrara, so this is how it comes out. Nice gloss, um, protected white marble. So the, the product is colorless. You can apply it on any stone. And what was the second question? Ah, the, the amount. Um, you need about 160 to 200 grams a square meter. You have to uh, apply. Um, it is a second coat uh, 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 as a two, not a two component. But this is the one component product. It's a, a single component liquid, but to cure it, to make it rock hard like it is, to make it protective, um, you need a UV lamp, a special UV lamp. You go over the surface, it gets cured in seconds and you have a finished protected surface. So you apply it with your spraying device or with your paintbrush, yeah, evenly on your stone. You move the UV lamp over it and it's cured in second. We say about one minute you need for one square meter. So it's quite fast and uh, the complete protection is done and you get a glossy finish, uh, a high gloss finish as you could see here. And if you want to have it a matte finish, um, we can tell you how to do that. You will get special papers, uh, poly uh, uh, sanding papers for that. Um, they're everywhere available. Um, not, not from the stone industry, but from some different uh, 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 fabricators, uh, fabrications, um, industries, some grinding and polishing papers, and then you can create any finish you want from matte finish, satin matte finish, uh, yeah, light shine finish. So you are independent there, but it always starts with a glossy finish. Another question, Johannes, yeah. uh, when will the product be available and what about data sheets of this product? And what about the price? <laughs> price, you have to contact your local Akemi distributor. Um, as always, we don't talk about prices here. Um, the product is available now. So just contact your, your local uh, distributor. All the data is also available. Um, contacted us or the uh, your distributor and uh, the technical data sheets, the the, the product uh, 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 flyer um, is available, and you can you can uh, get all the information you need. As it is a special product, as it is not, let's say for everyone. Yeah, um, you need a little bit of experience, but in the end, it's quite easy for the application if you have done it once. Um, we will recommend that if you are, let's say, a manufacturer of high glass furniture or so, um, contact the local Akimi distributor in your country. 
um, they get in touch with us and we will make a demonstration on your site or they make a demonstration on your site. How are all the steps to create this um, surface and this finish? No more questions. No honest. more questions. Okay, great. So I was just not yet finished here with cleaning. I will show you again the stones which we have destroyed um, or not destroyed. And don't forget the Jollinator, Johannes. Ah, yeah, yeah. Jollinator <laughs> will also is sitting there. Um, so let's move this devil stuff here. So I'm still cleaning here the tiles. And now you can see here the complete destroyed surface. Uh, from the acid and from the lime and lemon. And then compare to that, yeah, the protected surface uh, here. You see, perfectly glossy, perfect reflection. And then compare to that here, our acid attack. Yeah, this, as I said again, no stains. This is destroyed surface etched surface, um, nothing you can clean here. The only thing is protected in the first place. Okay, if there are not more questions to the acid protect. More questions. More questions, great. So then we go over um, to our Cholinator again. We have here our Cholinator, it's cured already. So now I remove the tapes. And that's it. You have a nice edge. You have a massive look. Yeah. The glue is still a little bit glossy. Yeah. Because it cures that way. If you don't like it, because you have maybe here a matte finish, you just go with a 200 C200 grinding a block or paper on it or 400 and make a, a one shot slide of it and it's matte finish and you get this nice massive uh, design already this looks massive yeah when you see it um, I think every client uh, uh, cannot tell if it's like one piece or two pieces so this is really um, a nice tool to create this massive designs out of uh, thin ceramics and lightweight uh, substructure. Good. So this was our webinar um, for from the new products we have launched uh, during Verona and and Jasai this year in September, end of September. So um, thank you for watching. A few, uh, one, two more slides I have. Ah, okay. Here's the product. Yeah, it was the slides where vice versa. So as I said, it's a UV curing protective coating. So one component is the product and the other component is the UV light, which directly hardens the surface in no time. And we see the product in countertops, dining tables, um, other luxuries or, or high quality surfaces made of marble, limestone, or acid sensitive stones. Yeah? It does not have to be marble or limestone. It could also be a um, terrazzo, for example, if you have like a nice Terrasso countertop, there are there some um, companies doing that. It has a high scratch resistance, yeah, of course, because everything what before had the impact on the marble now has the impact on this protective coating. Um, of course, if you slam a hammer on the marble, you will break a marble. The same would happen here. So you cannot uh, uh, make the, the, the marble uh, uh, in, how do you say, indestructible, but you can make the maintenance and the daily use much, much easier for everyone because they don't have to worry about very fast uh, uh, cleaning the stains, the wine, the tea, the coffee spilled there. Oh no, I have to remove it very fast. No, here was the acid protect. It's there. It protects even high temperature. I forget to mention that. Um, so it, it's up to 150 degrees Celsius. Um, protection there. So when you have, let's say, a, a bowl of noodles cooking with hot uh, noodle water, you place it there, yeah, um, there will be no issue. Okay, so this was our webinar. 
just some upcoming webinars. Next topic uh, uh, will be on Thursday, the 15th of December, our last webinar for this year, renovation and restoration of natural stone surfaces. So all surfaces are um, mentioned there or, or yeah, treated there, floors, countertops, vanity tops, etc., where you have to do some restorations um, to do and what you can do there, um, yeah, if you want uh, uh, to be updated for our next year's webinars, just follow us or um, go on our websites, uh, uh, stein.akemi.de, current topics, webinars. And yeah, if you have any questions to the Asset Protect, for example, or any other product which we have mentioned, write us directly, info at akemi.de, webinar at akemi.de, and we will provide all the information for you. So. Thank you for watching. Are there any more questions, Otello? No more questions. No more questions. Okay, perfectly. Then I hope to see you in December and yeah, have a nice afternoon.